Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG and Games, and I'm going to be continuing my Blender Modifiers tutorial series that I started um, last Wednesday. So, in this tutorial, we're going to be covering the bevel. Now, the bevel is used to kind of um, angle the sides because if let's just be honest, that if I zoom in, does any object have that sharp of an edge? And generally, you wouldn't want that, especially on a generic object. I mean, maybe something like if I hit Shift A and add like, a, you wouldn't use this on a cylinder. You would only use this if you were using a cube-based object. So if I click on this and I go back to my normal setup where I move this out, and I click on the wrench, you can see that if I go to Add Modifier and Bevel, it actually does a considerable amount to the object itself. And if I hide it by clicking the eye, then you can see that it does a lot to it. So I'm going to talk about the different variables in this, and then we'll go from there. So the width determines how big these edges are. So you can make this all the way up to like that. I make a cool shape, or you can make it really small. I usually use somewhere between um, point. I usually use about point one or or like. Whoops, not that. We do point one. Yes, I usually use like one point one or point one five. Just something like that. And that looks good, but that's pretty, um, that just doesn't look good. I mean, that's not what we want. We want it to be, like, smoother. So that's where the segments come in. The segments, so this right here is one segment. Each of these is considered, each of these edges that's flat is considered one segment. And that's why it's giving a triangle right here, because that's where they over, all overlap. But if we had two segments, you'll see it's a little bit better, and we get a few more. And then if we go up to three, you'll see that that looks really sharp, and it's actually like a rounded cube. So that's a not cool little thing you can do with it. So that's segments. I usually keep them around two or three, depending on what you want. Um, it's your idea. It's your model, so you can do what you want. So then there's profile. Now I just figured this out when I um, and profile actually is where the edges are on the object that you just created. So it doesn't do much if you have one segment, but if you have two or three, it will actually do this really cool effect, and I can even do up to four, and it will round them out, and it actually looks really cool. And you can also raise them to one, where it's just a straight bevel, so if you didn't want it that much of a bevel, then you can do like 0.9 or something like that, or if you wanted like a really, really engraved thing like that, you could do that. So I'm going to reset this to about 0.5, because I don't use it. But, and then I'm not going to cover material because I don't think that that's really necessary. I'm also going to, I'm going to load it to 0.25. So, that did nothing. So, I'm actually going to put that like right there. So, now we've done that. But then we have these checkbox, these checkboxes. So, I'm just going to go over these real quick. Clamp overlap just means that you can't, so that you can't like under bevel. But I don't see much point of doing that. I have not seen it. Um, I think if I see, like, I just don't see much point in that. So, yeah, I just don't know what to do with that. So I'm gonna keep that on. Um, this is cool, but the o this is one of my favorite things is the only vertices. And now you'll see that it kind of it chips away at each of the vertices, but and that's really cool for doing cube objects. But let's say we wanted to do something a bit um, cooler. We can actually. So we have eight vertices right now. If I scroll down to this add menu on here and I hit subdivide, you'll see that it puts a new one. And I can actually subdivide this up to three cuts and you'll do all the outside edges. And if I continued subdividing, you could essentially make a jagged edge on anything. So that's a really cool technique and I really, really like that technique. So I'm going to command Z a bunch to where I get back to this. I'm going to raise the profile because it's becoming annoying. So now, I only did that for the only verses. So now for the limit method, that's a bit cool. You can actually set it, um, it's, um, it's not that handy on a cube because most all the angles are 90 degrees, but if you had something like, I don't know, a character or square shaped person, I don't know, it's your model, um, this angle could be used now, weight is different. 
that you there's a mode called weight painting and what that does is it basically is like determining what parts are heavier than others like what parts would sag down and stuff and that's where it would bevel so that's a nice little thing and then there's vertex group and i'm not ex and that's if you have a vertex group i'm not going to go into that because even i don't understand that and so most of the time i just use none that's pretty good now width method is pretty cool you can actually say for it to offset the width you can set it to be the width itself you can set it to be depth or percent now this is the width so if the width so you can see that it looks different than see how it so if i'm going to just pump that up all the way and give it uh three segments i'm going to pump this up to two just extreme now offset it looks like a triangle and that's actually a pretty cool triangle it's something cool to 3d print um width makes it into like a sphere depth makes it into this crazy thing and i think i see that if you like you can see that you can make it's basically the same thing as offset but it's got a little bit more so i'm going to bump this back up to two and then percent your guess is as good as mine i don't know exactly what that does so it's a few cool little things and that's i would normally use offset but i would not use that high of a width i'd usually use like 1.5 maybe even 0.1 um just so that i get a fair bevel so that was the bevel modifier next up on the list i believe is yep it's boolean and so we're going to get into the boolean modifier next and that should be coming next this saturday so if i'm wrong then sorry but so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys in the next one